Hey, what's up, guys? This is a follow-up video to uh, Nintendo's franchises. And uh, I left a few points out, and a lot of people in the comment sections have asked me things. You know, so I'm, go I'm going to explain that in these videos. And, uh, in this video, like I said, I left out some points that uh, I needed to make. So let's get started. Uh, firstly, I saw somebody uh, mention the Call of Duty franchise. And I saw a lot of people talking about, uh, well, what's the problem with milking, Shokyo? Well, I mean, firstly, people, like I said in the game, the video, it wasn't about whether or not the franchises are milked. I just don't get it. I say things in the beginning of my videos, and the people will say, say something that has to do with that thing that I already addressed. Before I really I got into the video, before I started making my points, I said it's not about whether or not the franchises are milked, people. But anyways, here's here's how I see milking. My definition of milking is, you know, how rapidly a game in a franchise comes out. You know, how quickly it comes out. For instance, Call of Duty. The difference between Call of Duty being milked and Zelda being milked is the fact that a Call of Duty game comes out every single year never skips that's the difference between call of duty and metroid that's the difference now metroid has like uh what 10 11 games in the franchise now does that sound a lot yes at first would that sound like a milk franchise like 10 to 11 games yes but if you actually look at the time period between those games you see what i'm saying and of course, like I said uh, in my first video, in the 16 and 8-bit era, you know, of course things are going to be more close together because, you know, games weren't as nearly as, you know, uh, complex as they are now, you know. But if you look at, you know, N64 era and above, you know, those games, you know, are really well spaced out, you know. Now, Call of Duty, it's every year and you're getting the same thing. So that's two things that's wrong with the Call of Duty franchise. That's two things. And like I mentioned about uh, Smash Bros, you know, the Smash Bros games, they play the same. You know, I know a lot of you are going to say, well, you can't complain about Call of Duty's gameplay about being the same because if it's the same, that means it's still good because, you know, Call of Duty 2 was good. You see what I'm saying? But, but like I said, Smash Bros, it's the same, you know, gameplay, but yet it's still different. But Infinity Ward and Treyarch, they're not making that unique difference. They're not, they're keeping the core but that's it. They're not really adding much to it. You see what I'm saying? They're not taking it to the next level. Adding in ballistic knives, that's not taking the core gameplay to the next level. That's, that's not what it is. So you see, guys, that's the difference between the Call of Duty franchise and the Metroid or Zelda uh, franchise. With Call of Duty, it's the same crap every single year. But here's another thing you guys got to uh, realize, guys. Um, Mario, Link... And Metroid, those, I mean, whoa, excuse me, excuse me, and Samus, excuse me, <laughs> Mario, Link, and Samus, they are gaming icons, I can't believe I have to spell everything out for you guys, guys, those are gaming icons, those are people who made it big when gaming was made big by Nintendo, when, when, when gaming, you know, first started out back, back in those 8-bit days and 16-bit days, those were gaming legends, and they still are. So, of course, Nintendo is going to keep making games of some of the most famous video game characters in existence. Like I said, uh, I forget which video it was. But like I said, everybody knows, knows who Mario is. Everybody knows who Mario is. A lot of casual gamers, not as much as uh, Mario, but a lot of casual gamers can identify Link. Like, if you just go to a random person in the street... Show them picture link. You know, they'll be like, oh, I know that guy's from, man. He's from uh, that series Zelda, something like that. You know, they'll say that. As Again, he's not as popular as Mario, but Link is popular as well. Casuals know Mario. Now, Samus, she's really not all that popular with the casuals. But any gamer, you know, any of you here know who Samus is. You see what I'm saying? But if you say names like Sevchinko or Sev and Nathan Hale. You know, and Cole. Not everybody's going to know who that is. You see what I'm saying? So you really can't get mad at Nintendo for keep making, keep making games or, you know, the most famous faces in gaming history. You see what I'm saying? It's retarded, people. Uh, let's see what else I want to talk about. 
uh, I already talked about what's wrong with the milking. Like I said, milking to me is how how quickly you know the next game in the series comes out. But uh, uh, another point: a lot of you listed Sony franchises and stuff. Talk about see Sony, see Sony makes new franchises. I did say Sony. That video had almost nothing to do with Sony. All I said was you guys are getting these sequels pretty quickly. And if you guys were to go at the same rate for 25 years, you guys would have a ton of games as well. That's the only point I made. And no way was I bashing Sony. I wasn't bashing the games. You guys just need to calm down. <laughs> you guys get offended when you hear a, a, a name of your favorite game just said. You don't, but you don't hear what's said about it. All I said was you're getting sequels pretty quickly. That's all I said. I wasn't bashing Sony. I wasn't bashing Sony's uh, new IPs. So don't list me no new IPs because that's that has nothing to do with anything. It doesn't. Uh, the next point. The next point. Uh, wouldn't you guys want Killzone to continue? You see what I'm saying? Why not want to continue to play your favorite franchises? And a lot of you keep asking for revivals. I mean, you guys want Spyro. You know, you guys want Crash. A lot of Microsoft fans, you know, they want an HD remake of the first Halo. You, you see what I'm saying? So, I mean, everybody wants their favorite gaming franchises to continue. Uh, yeah, let, let, let me give another example. If you want to set that, your sports team. Don't you want your favorite sports team to keep on playing? You see what I'm saying? Huge LA Lakers fan. I'm from LA. Kobe is the rawest fool in the NBA. I don't care what any of you say. Okay, why would I want the Lakers to just suddenly just stop playing basketball? Because they've been in it for 50 years? That's why I would want them to stop? See, it doesn't make sense. You want your favorite team to keep going, don't you? It's the same thing these video game franchises. You want them to keep going. Because you like them. You want to continue to see them. You want to continue to play them. Same way you want to continue to see your favorite athletes and your favorite teams keep playing. Uh, another point, guys. Uh... Like I, like I said, Nintendo does make a new IPs. Now, uh, I will I will admit, I will say it, you know, it's not a lot. But I was just saying that they do make new IPs, period. A pretty decent amount, too. Not as much as Sony does. Not, they don't make as many as Sony. But they make new IPs, period. But here's the thing you guys got to realize. Nintendo has a buttload of established franchises. Mario, Mario Kart, Metroid, Zelda... Fire Emblem, Donkey Kong, Kirby, Star Fox, F-Zero. They brought Punch-Out back. You know, uh, I don't think Treasure... Is Treasure part of Nintendo? Uh, if it's not, but, uh, you know, Sin and Punishment. Nintendo owns Sin and Punishment. You know, they brought Kid Icarus back. There's Pikmin. And then there's a franchise that not, uh, a lot of people forgot about, Battalion Wars. Nintendo owns Battalion Wars, too. I just listed, like, 14 franchises. So, do you see the point I'm making? Nintendo wouldn't really want to make a bunch of new IPs when they already have a bunch of established franchises that everybody knows and loves. You see what I'm saying? There's no point. There's no point. Sony's established franchises aren't as big and famous and don't get as many sales as these Nintendo games. So it's completely understandable for them to make new IPs in Nintendo. Do you see the point I'm making? If I have 100 Establish IPs. I wouldn't care about making a new IP. You see what I'm saying? Think, people. Think. It's not that hard to understand. It's not that hard to understand. And like I said, people, you buy Nintendo systems for Nintendo games. So like I said, tell, telling a Nintendo fan you're, you're getting the same games over and over again, which or not, we're getting the same franchise over and over again, not the same game, but... To tell us we're getting the same franchise over and over again, it's redundant because that's exactly what we want. That's why we bought a Nintendo console in the first place. What, I bought a Wii for HD graphics? <laughs> no. Great media playback? No. How about DLC? Great online? No. The Wii has doesn't have great online. Excuse me. Uh, no HD graphics. You know, no hard drive. Why do you think I bought a Wii? Nintendo franchises, people. And uh, last thing I want to talk about, uh, last point, last point I want to make, guys. A lot of these uh, 
games in these franchises are so different to the point where they might as well be new IPs. And that was another point I was making. For instance, Metroid Other M, it's so different to the point where if you replace Samus with some other person, you know, and all the characters and everything, it'd be a different it'd be, it'd be a different IP, you see what I'm saying? And matter of fact, Kirby's Epic Yarn, at first it wasn't a Kirby game. Did you guys know that? Kirby's Epic Yarn at first wasn't a Kirby game. Nintendo thought of this idea, you know, this whole yarn thing, you know, transformation, stuff like that. But at the last minute, they said, you know what? Let's slap Kirby on it. Let's make it a, a Kirby game. So, But that game was so different to where it might as well have been a new IP. It actually was a new IP at first. So you see what, you see what I'm saying, guys? A lot of these games are, like, so different to where it's like, like I said, it's just, it's just the same universe. You see what I'm saying? That's all it is. It's the same character, the same story. But it's like almost a completely different game. So, uh, I think that's everything I wanted to cover. Again, guys, this isn't about, this has nothing to do with the comparison between, you know, who makes better games, you know, Sony or Nintendo. It's, it's not about that, guys. And it's not about making excuses. And it's not about whether or not Nintendo is milking, guys. The whole point I'm making was that... Nintendo has a bunch of established franchises, so they don't need to make new IPs. Nintendo fans don't really need new IPs. Most of them don't even want new IPs, don't care for new IPs. And like a lot of these revived games, like uh, Kid Icarus, that I, that's just coming back. It's not a new IP, but you know it might as well be because we haven't seen it in like 20 years. You see what I'm saying? Uh, you know, Sin and Punishment, we haven't seen that since the N64 days. Uh, Punch Out. Haven't seen that in a while. So you see what I'm saying? Yes, those aren't new IPs, but those are games you haven't seen in a long time to the point where they might as well be. See what I'm saying? So, hopefully now you guys get it. <laughs> I, I don't know about you guys, but, you know, I think these two videos have been some pretty fair videos. I mean, I think all my videos are pretty fair, but, you know, I, guys, I have brought, brought up some solid points. And you, you, you gotta admit it. I'm gonna call here, but uh, I've dragged this video on long enough. Uh, I'll see you guys later.